The only way things can hinder you is if you become its servant. If you become a servant to life's expectations or the societal expectations of what you should achieve, then you are jailing yourself even in the golden prison. Because even if you have a high salary, but you have to compromise your mental health, your sense of freedom, you have to lie yourself, sell your soul to do all these things, then how is that true life freedom? The more you know who you are in this world, the more you know what value you have to offer, the less you get pushed around by other people's paradigm. But if you are jailing yourself to your relative's paradigm, if you are jailing yourself to your friend's judgments towards you, then your reality is going to be as small as people's petty judgments towards you. But the more you're able to free yourself from other people's obligations, the more you're able to free yourself from other people's drama, that's when you become indifferent to any negative circumstances. How to remain indifferent to any shittiness that pops up in your circumstances. I am so excited and passionate about this topic because I remembered at the end of 2023, I've set the intention for myself that this was going to be the best year of my life. And I'm going to make sure that every single day I'm conscious of what I'm doing. And yet all the really bad circumstances has unfolded this year in a way where it would have thrown me off in every single other year. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the stoic approaches that really worked for me this year. Every single time some weirdness pops up. And without further ado, let's just get straight to this video. Never entertain anything that you don't wish to continue experiencing. And by entertaining, I don't just mean paying attention to it, but you also have to know what you're mentally entertaining in your mind. For Epictetus, he says, we cannot control the external events around us, but we can control our reactions to them. And this is very similar to the quote by Lao Tzu from the book Tao Te Ching, where he says, do you have the patience to let the rain clear and your mud settle? Which pretty much means that there are gonna be times where the storm will keep storming, but it is your responsibility to not put yourself or entangle yourself in that storm. And the only thing you can do is literally let it play out without reacting. Now, I remember during the beginning of 2023, I've also set a very similar intention for myself that I'm gonna make 2023 a very organized year. I'm gonna be so catering towards anybody that offers me a paid job, for any opportunities for me to develop my career. And at the time it was public speaking. No matter what task I was given, no matter who asked me to do anything, I'm gonna give it my 100% and make sure that everybody around me is so happy. And by the end of 2023, despite doing every single thing right in terms of being organized, showing up for people, giving my 100% in every single work that I did, I didn't manifest a relationship that I wanted. My bank account was still broke. I was still living with my parents. And in fact, my bank account just kept taking money away from me because I didn't have any money put into it. That that account got canceled permanently. And even more than that, I got physically sick for three weeks straight. So I couldn't go and see the fireworks for New Year's Eve as I wanted. And everything was just so shit, exactly like the end of 2022. So I was hoping that if I stayed high vibrational and really loved myself in 2024, then by this year, all the happy experiences will finally unfold in my life. And even though, yes, there are more positive movements, but there are more worse circumstances that happened this year as compared to last year. So as soon as I was really clear that in January, on the very first few days of January, I'm gonna be high vibrational and I'm gonna be so positive. I already have my 100 beach clips finished and uploaded. So I was ready to launch this YouTube channel. But the first comment that I got on this YouTube channel was, you should just quit YouTube and go and do OnlyFans. Damn, what a trigger. But not only that, that was probably the most minor negative experiences that I faced this year. Because down the line of that month, my phone then got hacked and pretty much these messages were sent out to all these people that was supposed to make me feel like, damn, this is so embarrassing. It's supposed to really humiliate me. And again, I tried my best not let this experience trigger me, 
And that was also the beginning of me filming long videos for my YouTube. I was hoping that as soon as I apologized, this whole negative experiences around it would finish, but it didn't finish. I was continued to get guilt tripped, continue to feel obligated to keep showing up to the point where I was just really, really, really done. Now this community was only my source of social group. Outside of that, my friends all kind of moved on and this was the only place where I could go and socialize and feel like I belong in a community. And to lose that at the time felt like I lost a big chunk of my life, to be honest. But yet some weird circumstances happened that I had to lose this whole community altogether and I was pretty much isolated for many, many, many months, spending every single weekend on repeat, just editing my videos and experiencing the complete opposite of what I've always wanted in my life. So what I've always wanted to have was people to laugh with, people to socialize, to connect, to bond with, having a beautiful romantic relationship where, you know, we're communicating every day. We have a beautiful bond, we have a beautiful friendship and I'm completely prioritized and none of that was unfolding in my life. And even more than that, as soon as I left the community altogether, I felt physically sick even more than December. I felt like I was getting spiritually attacked, that all these negative, this anger, this resentment towards me was being thrown at me. And I had to use a lot of willpower to just get up each day and get a video filmed and posted every few days. I was hoping that this would be the worst thing that happened in my life. No worries, now I have the space to fully work on my YouTube. But not only did I see almost no movement with my YouTube, and it was kind of going back and forth between getting a lot of views and then getting no views. but my family member from Thailand just suddenly passed away from cancer in a quick amount of time. We knew that she was getting worse and worse, but we didn't expect that it would happen like this in April. And at the time I was in Australia, my passport was not valid for me to get out of this country. So I had to remain in Australia. And because of that, I felt so guilty for the way that I was living my life that everyone was suffering around me, except for me who was going to swim hitting my goals, thriving internally, that I would shut myself out from going to swim for three months. I continued to isolate myself and do the same repetitive routine that it felt like my life became some sort of hamster wheel in a jail where it just kept going on the same thing over and over and over and over again for many, many, many months. And there was no views, no movements on YouTube as much. But one day I decided that I am done with this guilt because the more I was trapping myself in this perpetual stagnant plateauing cycle, the more I felt like my body was getting weaker. So I decided that I was going to let go of this guilt and I'm going to continue hitting the goals I want to hit, which was doing my swims, giving myself permission to finally go out, go to the beach, enjoy my life once a week. So even though my 30th birthday was nice, but also disappointing, but I tried to push forward. I tried to upload more videos, try to stay more consistent. And I was seeing my YouTube results declining amidst the fact that I was feeling more confident and posting more. But that was not a big deal until September where we also knew that this family member was going to pass soon. But by September, which was five months from April, my other family member passed away. And this time it was in Australia. So this was last week. And this time I was really, really there. And since all of this happened last week, I also knew exactly what to expect because right before the passing happened, there were more series of positive internal shifts that I made to myself. And for my family to pass in this kind of way, it meant that I was definitely going to cry a lot. I was definitely going to plateau or dip or spiral. And since I saw this coming, I was able to take a step back and finally stop reacting. Instead of me allowing myself to feel so much guilt that I could have done so much better for my family member while she was still alive, but I also allowed myself to realize that the version of me who was battling with mental health and all this weird shittiness in my reality did the best that she could. And my family member knew that. So even though the whole process of being with my mom and just seeing every single process unfold after her death, like minutes after she stopped breathing and all the people came to take her body, it was actually a very dear experience to me. 
I feel very grateful that at that minute I could afford to be there, that I didn't have to tell any boss that please can I have a leave or I didn't have to compromise anything for anyone, but I was able to see everything and be there with my mom. And I tried to interpret the situation as how grateful and how rich is my life that I had the power to choose where I wanted to be in that moment and I got to be there. And so even though the last seven days I did cry a lot, but I didn't cry in the same way that I used to cry five months ago. This time I knew exactly what my internal goals are and I knew who I wanted to become. So the entire thing that happened after that was just a very beautiful experience for me, to be honest. The funerals, the temples, going to see the monks, being compassionate, opening my heart to talk to people at the temple, and also not fearing what my family friends would think of me. Because I didn't have the money to dye my hair, I didn't have the money to get a tattoo, I didn't have money to really style myself, I just naturally look the way I do now. And it seems like Thai people appreciate this kind of simple look. And people were telling me at the temple that my skin was beautiful. And I'm thinking that, fuck, I never had a skincare. Why do people keep telling me that? Why do people keep complimenting me when I don't need it? I don't want it. But just to have people reassure to me that, oh, the universe is just such a kind place. There are so many kind-hearted people everywhere. No matter if they're Thai, they're Laos, they're Cambodians, they're any nationality. Anyone can be so kind to you when you open your heart and stop reacting to the perceived shortcomings. So even though I was somewhat drained the last seven days, but I also felt like it was the most eye-opening and most beautiful last seven days that I've got to experience. So I honestly felt like this last seven days was such an enriching life experience for me. And I really have to thank my grandma because she made me open my heart and finally let go of the grief the guilt, the shame, the every single thing that I felt like, why couldn't I just be a better granddaughter just a few months ago, just five months ago, just a year ago? Why couldn't I just open my heart like this and just be like this? But now I finally let go of the fact that, you know what, everybody is doing their best with where they can. And because of that, I allowed myself to connect more to people that I've never met, whether it was people working at the funeral, the managers who manage the whole funeral ceremony, and even the monks where I respect them, but I don't put them on a pedestal and even they felt it. But I saw everybody coming together to just make a beautiful ceremony and you know, just stick together. And it was just such a priceless and very valuable experience to go through. But had I been reactive and continued to entertain what I didn't want to experience, then of course all of this whole process the last seven days would really, really trigger me. Because even though this sounds really, really bad, but the last place I want to immerse myself in is a place where people were getting dementias and sickness and deaths and funeral. Like I didn't want to be around that. But because I surrendered to the idea that this was a bad thing and that I could see the whole experience as a beautiful lesson for me to learn about life, that's when I was able to transcend it really, really quickly. And now I'm in a place where I feel like, you know what, even with my YouTube, I can just let down of my guard a bit more and talk to you like I'm talking to an actual human being instead of something that, oh, I have to do this for results only. Which leads to the point of, Never let anything that happens to you define your self-worth. And I'm also gonna put in a quote by Marcus Aurelius that it is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. And I can say that even though I live a very privileged life and I was just born in a family that offered me so much privilege and so much head start, but it doesn't mean that I've never experienced adversities. And it also doesn't mean that anybody who's born in a wealthier and more affluent family than me has never experienced challenges and hardship. But what I'm very grateful to experience these days is that I came to realize that no matter how annoyed I am at my family members, my mom and dad at times, but they are genuinely good people. And because they are good people, it makes it easier for me to not let what happens to me dim my light too much. So I've been thinking about my life for the last 10 years and if anybody looked at my life from outside in and really saw that, okay, she's not successful, no income, no savings, no anything, living with parents, single, not married, not getting married soon, and all these things, you could easily label me as, oh, 
What has she been doing for the last 10 years that makes her such a failure? Like, is she okay? Do I need to get her a banking job or a customer service job or something? Like, is she okay? And that's how people could easily judge me. But because I started to let go of the self-judgment that there are things that have happened in the last 10 years. So I stopped seeing myself as a failure, regardless of how convincing my situation is. And really interestingly, now that I go out to the temples to see people, the way I stand, the way I carry myself, the way I walk, the way I talk, I could feel that people respect my presence. I don't even have to say anything much. I just have to be there, sit still. And even the monk, even anyone who looks at me would respect my presence. And I have no idea why besides the fact that every single day I really respect my commitment to my work. See, I've never been more passionate about any other kind of work than this, talking about this, filming myself doing this and reading the comments and replying to it. This is what I feel so rich doing and so passionate about that, that by the minute I'm going out to meet people, even if I'm not carrying a Chanel handbag, even if I don't have $20,000 sitting in my bank account, even if I don't have real estate properties or any assets attached to my name today, I don't feel less than anymore because I'm choosing that no matter what has happened to me in the last 10 years that has severely hindered me from achieving certain milestones that every single adult should achieve by now, it doesn't mean I'm a failure. It just meant that everyone is moving at a different pace. And not only do I understand this, but I'm choosing to embody this principle. And what's even interesting is that when I start talking to my friends, she would then open up to me that, you know, her parents also have similar expectations placed on her. And it makes me realize that no matter what my mom says to me, no matter what anybody that I care about says to me, these days I'm just like, okay, cool. It goes in my left ear and out my right ear. Like I just don't give a crap. I used to get so offended when my mom says, when will you start that business? Or when will you start doing something? Cause you're getting old, nobody's gonna hire you. When are you going to just start? And I'm like, what the fuck? I've been doing this for like how many months now? In fact, for a year now, when did I start filming the beige clips? When did I start filming this? So I just argued back and say, well, you're choosing not to see what I've done, but I don't really care anymore, to be honest. And I can feel that shift where, okay, she also respects my presence more than before. And that is such a great, great feeling to have. So this doesn't come from you verbally convincing to anyone that, oh, look at this, look at my graduation degree, you should respect me. Look at all my achievements, I've won these contests and I'm doing all these things, you should respect me. But it's that internal sense of self-respect where every single day I knew what I did. Right when I wake up, I took care of myself, I took care of my vibration, I know my life priorities, I know what goals to hit. So no matter what people say, I feel internally solid. I don't feel shaken. I don't feel like I have to prove anything to anyone. And therefore, when people feel that energy, they cannot reflect anything back at you, but respect towards you. Because you didn't let anything that happened to you define your self-worth. And that is how you become indifferent to people's judgments. It's not only that you don't give a fudge, but it's also that you know yourself so, so well that their petty judgments, that their words, their annoying, frustrating statements about who you should become has literally no impact to your emotions. You don't feel anything when you hear it. You just feel neutral. You just feel okay that like it goes in the left ear and out the right ear. That is you being indifferent to every single petty little circumstances that's trying to get at you to push your buttons to make you react, but you don't react. Never accept rejection as the final answer ever. And I'm also gonna follow this up by a quote that says, there is really no such thing as a rejection. There is the event itself and the story we tell ourselves about what it means. Damn, doesn't that hit home for you? Now I'm going to be sharing with you the time since 2022 when I freshly walked away from the coaching startup job that I had. Now this coaching startup job enabled me to live my dream life for a little bit. It gave me the funds for me to be able to live exactly where I wanted to live and for me to be able to go from swimming in the rock pool to doing 40 laps, 2000 meters within 10 months. But what this job also did to me was destroy my mental health. I remember those times where I was careful with my savings, but the money that I was using to pay for my expenses, it was kind of limited. And I remember the day where my pay started getting delayed by 13 days. 
and how fucking freaked out I was. I was like, I don't want to ask my parents for money. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go through this. And not only did the pay get delayed by 13 days, but there were situations where I felt obligated to take my friend out to dinner. And that friend, even though he was much more loaded than me, he expected that, oh, this time Patty's taking me out. So I had to shout us the meal with the money that I wasn't going to have anymore. And then my friend from Thailand was like, well, can you pay for the shipping fee first and I'll pay you back? And she would definitely pay me back. But then my mom met up with her family and my mom texted me and said, don't ask her to pay you anything. I will pay you back the money because she's our family friend. Fuck, I thought. I was getting financially screwed over big time. And the worst part is not only was my pay getting delayed, but now there were things like you have to put in every single hour that you worked. And if you're not working, you can't charge for that amount. You cannot charge for the lunch breaks. And if you're sitting on the train but not doing your work, you cannot charge that amount. But then my job was kind of like administration and a bit of customer service. But there was no customer to serve. They couldn't get the customers on board. So there was no work for me to do. When there's no work for me to do, I can't put it into the sheet that I've completed these tasks because there's no task to complete. And if there's no task to complete, I will not get paid the same amount as I used to every single month. And I felt so fucked, fucked hardcore. And not only that, some random cats appeared in my life at the time and the cat was injured. So even though I was supposed to leave my dream life, but I was spending a lot of my money for the cat's medical bill, which in the end, the cat ran away back to its owner and the owner never offered to pay me anything that I actually helped cover them for, which is the cat's medical bill and all these things. And since then, I felt so, so rejected. I felt so unworthy. I was slowly losing my dream life month after month after month to the point where I was bank account broke. I was back to square one and everything in my life just fell apart. But even then I tried my best to not allow myself to stay depressed in bed. So what I would do is try to apply for jobs that I know I could be qualified for. And every single time I applied for these jobs, I would pay me the bare minimum graduate entry position jobs or my interview would go to somebody else before I even have a chance to talk to them. That was how screwed up the end of 2022 was. It was just a whirlwind of rejections after rejections after rejections from preparing so much for a contest and then losing it and all these things. And I said to myself that by 2024, this would no longer be a part of my life's experience. Yet there was still a series of these same and similar patterns that were occurring in 2024 and I finally realized that the only way to shut it is to stop feeling rejected by it. It was not about the fact that if I pray that it's not going to ever happen, that suddenly the universe will stop allowing situations to come and trigger you. But it's actually about you. The minute you stop feeling rejected because this person ghosted you after the interview, because this job says you're not qualified enough or experienced enough. Bullshit, I thought. The minute that you say, oh my God, I can't even afford hair keratin. I feel so rejected. This person wouldn't offer me the job. I don't have a job. I don't have income. All of these situations are making me feel like a complete loser. And I'm thinking, why would anyone that has a proper job and a proper career for themselves ever want to be in a relationship with a loser like me? And I was thinking that for like many, 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 many months until I decided that these situations would not stop replaying until I stop feeling rejected. So if you feel like every single thing is continually crumbling in your 3D reality, you get yourself in debt, you lose your job, you break up, all these things fall apart in your life. I'm telling you that no matter how positive you think you can become by saying that, as long as I affirm that it's never gonna come, it's never gonna happen again. No, it's still going to happen but it will stop happening when you don't assign excessive meaning to it. When you don't look at things like, oh, he ghosted me as, okay, he ghosted me, damn, I'm unworthy. But it will dissolve when you actually be like, okay, I don't know why he's disappearing, but that's okay, it's not my business to know. What I need to know is how I'm gonna film the next video successfully, how I'm gonna make myself feel emotionally stable, how am I going to do 1,000 meters next week, how am I going to prepare my body to be more fit, and then one day, the answer will unfold, which it did for me. And this goes the same with, well, why didn't I get this job? Why did I lose this coloring competition? Why didn't I receive any money? Why didn't the views go up? That is not your job to know why things are not working in your favor. But what you need to know every single day is what are you living for and how you are going to make yourself feel happy in the process. 
What are you going to do to raise your vibration? What are you going to do to make sure that you always feel a bit of joy every single day? Where that is successfully doing your stretch, going for a walk, saying hi to strangers while you walk, walking past cute dogs, baking a cake, feeling relaxed, listening to YouTube videos and podcasts make you feel like, oh, I'm satisfied with this knowledge. I feel progress. I feel like I know what I'm doing. All these little compounded wins is what makes you rise above the rejection. A rejection is just a perception. It is not real. Nothing can take your power away. No job loss, no job rejections, no anything could make you feel disempowered if you don't give them permission to make you feel disempowered. Next, never lose sight of your life parties. Now this is so important because when a guy says, I don't want commitment, oh, they just suddenly disappear or the job that you want doesn't come to you. Nothing comes to you. What are you going to lean on? Are you going to go outwards and find 10 guys on a dating app so you can feel safe? Are you going to rely on people on Tinder or Coffee Meets Bagel to make your life feel purposeful? Like your life has meaning because there's 10 other guys inboxing you and telling you how beautiful you are. Really? Like there's no judgment towards people that do this, but really? Is this what you came here on earth to do? To seek validation? to seek external praises and love. Now, the reason why I'm also so passionate about this point is because back when I was in the public speaking community, I think I gave the people the impression that I had nothing else better in my life to look forward to than this very thing. So they start to assume that because I'm quite skilled at what I do, and I'm always giving my 100% in the work that I do in the moment I was given the work, they thought, okay, maybe I would be a good leader, but the job doesn't pay me any money. And even if I invest another 10 years doing that, all I would really get is recognition, like verbal praises and just being recognized in a social group. But it's not going to afford me my dream, dream life. It's not going to help me swim 40 laps consistently because every single day that you invest in making other people's dreams come true is the day that you start to neglect your own dreams. So if you are feeling weak and vulnerable and you're feeling like the only way I could have love, acceptance, community and friendship is by giving into other people's baskets, this is the perfect time for you to know what your life priorities are because people don't respect you just because you have skills. People only respect you when you truly respect yourself inside out. Because when you respect yourself from inside out, you don't have to verbally say fuck off. Your energy will say that. And when your energy say, this is my boundary and this is my limit, nobody would dare to cross it. But in order for you to even have that energetic capacity to be like, this is my standard, we need to know what you have to do every day to elevate your spirit on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can't just be like, well, I'm not a motivating person. This is all my life has to offer. What do you mean elevating spirit? Life is the way it is. You just got to settle. If you think you have to settle, then that becomes your reality. I actually share this with you in this particular video, how I would rather do the imaginal scene with a guy I haven't seen in six, seven months than texting 10 people on a dating app. Because my imaginal scene is something that I'm fully in control over. Even though this sounds really, really crazy, but the imaginal scenes were what helped me achieve all my little goals when I was feeling defeated. Every single time I imagined that this particular individual was telling me that I was safe or he was giving me his time and we had a good conversation in a nice place, I felt like my muscles are now strengthening on its own. It's some sort of weird hypnosis practice that suddenly your vibration just shoots through the roof. And now you feel like, I want to film a video. I want to go and swim. I want to go and walk. I want to do all these things with my life. And then you actually do it. And when you do it, you're producing evidences for yourself that you are fucking capable. You did this today. So the next time you're going to do it, you know exactly what you are going to do. And this momentum is what creates self-respect. The minute that you have self-respect, no matter who tries to bring you down, no matter who's envious of you, no matter which family member doubts you, you are now going to be indifferent to all these petty judgments. You're going to be indifferent to all the obstacles that feel like, why? Why me? Why now? Why are you still beating me down when I'm trying my best? You won't even have these questions anymore because you are indifferent. 
Your self-respect is shooting through the roof. Your self-concept is so high that no matter if you misplace your wallet a day after you got monetized like I did, you're just gonna be like, it happens for a reason. I don't need to know the reason, but I know I'm gonna get paid this year and I'm gonna be empowered the fuck out of. When you are in that energy, you are so invincible. And finally, never half ask your commitment towards yourself. And I'm also going to provide a quote by Epictetus that says, Freedom is the only worthy goal in life. And how much truer can that get? Guys, do you know what true freedom feels like? Does that feel like owning intentional handbags and feeling like in order for me to fit into this social group, I must have one of these Chanel bags in my collection? In order for me to fit in at this party, I have to drive a first-hand Mercedes. In order for me to feel validated, I must have this kind of boyfriend that I could show off to my best friend like a trophy. Is that true freedom? Or does true freedom mean you don't give a fuck about how people perceive you because that is not relevant to your life's purpose? How people choose to label you, how people choose to judge you, how people choose to talk about the decisions you've made for your life, when it has no impact to your self-esteem, when you become indifferent to these judgments, now you are truly free. Whether you have a Chanel handbag or not, you are truly free. If you can feel expensive wearing a Kmart bag and you feel like, I look gorgeous like this, even if I'm wearing a basic Kmart bag or a Chanel handbag, I still look expensive because I feel internally free. Isn't that true freedom? And what kind of friend do you have if the prerequisite to have these friends in your life is that you own Chanel handbags and a Mercedes to drive? Is that true friendship? So therefore, what are you truly chasing in life? The only way things can hinder you is if you become its servant. If you become a servant to life's expectations or the societal expectations of what you should achieve, then you are jailing yourself even in the golden prison. Because even if you have a high salary, but you have to compromise your mental health, your sense of freedom, you have to lie yourself, sell your soul to do all these things, then how is that true life freedom? And of course, even my mom would say herself, but Patty, everyone is in such a different life situation that they have to settle or they have to do others wrong to get what they want. They have to steal, they have to take advantage of, they have to exploit others to be rich, to feed their families. Well, if you believe that this has to be a part of your reality, then you are jailing yourself to that reality. But true internal freedom is knowing that none of this bullshit that you see on the news has to be a part of your dominant reality that you can choose to create exactly what you want by following your intuition, but not following your intuition from a totally woo-woo place, but by sitting in stillness and having a strong focus towards what my next best step is and really choosing to commit to that next best step, whether that is writing a resume, building a YouTube channel, working on your next project, committing to your fitness, doing your evening walks, going for your 1000 meter swim, even if those things are just as small as these activities, but as long as you commit to them, you are freeing yourself permanently. And the reason why you free yourself as a result of committing to your own dreams and vision and purpose is because the more you know who you are in this world, the more you know what value you have to offer, the less you get pushed around by other people's paradigms, the more you are committed to your own fitness, your own dreams, your own visions, your own writing, your own reading, your own meditations, your own self-focus, the more you're able to free your mental space to study other skill sets, to study alternative ways to make money work for you, not the other way around. But if you are gelling yourself to your relative's paradigm, if you are gelling yourself to your friend's judgments towards you, then your reality is gonna be as small as people's petty judgments towards you. Your whole life is just gonna be confined to this little thing where, oh no, I have to do this because there's this problem, I can't get out of this. But the more you're able to free yourself from other people's obligations, the more you're able to free yourself from other people's drama, that's when you become indifferent to any negative circumstances. No divorces, breakups, cheating, scandals, negativity, poverty, and all these things can hinder you from your progress if you are committed to yourself every day, right? But if you are only half assing your own commitments, the minute somebody says, oh, Patty, can you please listen to my very negative story for three hours so I can feel comforted? Fuck, you just lost three hours to tend to other people's needs and you stop committing to yourself. And no wonder why your goals don't commit to you. 
because you have to be fully committed to your dreams and vision that saying no is your normal reality. That saying no to getting trauma dumped, saying no to being other people's doormats, saying no to putting your awareness on any shittiness outside of you is your normal everyday reality. That you always come first, that your dreams and visions always come first. Now you truly become indifferent to anything that tries to pull you down. Even your old self that tries to pull you down and sabotage you from reaching your goals. None of these things will exist in your reality anymore because you are fully committed to yourself. And ironically, even though the discipline seems like you're trapping yourself, you're trapping yourself every weekend working so hard, but the minute you start to reach a threshold where damn, I'm conquering all these skill sets, I'm conquering my mind, I'm conquering my discipline. That is where freedom truly is. Exactly like what Epictetus says, that what other goals are worth striving for than freedom? Freedom to have autonomy over your life. Freedom to have autonomy over your mind. That is the best place you can be at. Okay, so this is how you remain indifferent to any life's obstacle using the stoic approach to conquer your life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. I absolutely loved it and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.